Okay, I'm not polishing my dust collection pipe. That would be a little obsessive. Actually, uh, meh, maybe that's not a bad idea. No, actually I'm uh, rubbing it with a microfiber cloth just to demonstrate how static electricity can build up on PVC pipe. I've got some little pieces of paper here and look at them standing up and attaching themselves to the pipe. This is why it's necessary to ground our system against any static electric buildup and possible discharge. Doing the grounding job on this dust collection system only requires a few things. I purchased these ring terminal connectors. They're sized for the wire that I got, which is 18 gauge. I use ring terminals because to me they're easier to get when you have to put two or even three under a screw. It's easier to put a ring terminal as opposed to a spade terminal which is open on the end. Those can be hard to hold into place. I got a 250 foot roll of this stranded copper wire, bare copper wire. You're going to need a pair of crimpers. This uh, pair I like. This is uh, GB tools, electrical tools. And I like it because it's color coded to match the terminals so you know exactly where to put it to get the right crimp to uh, cinch the wire into place in the terminal. And you need a small pair of wire cutters to cut this wire. Other than that, we're pretty much good to go. Okay, this is my very first terminal connection on this particular drop line. Got a little short connector piece, but I haven't screwed this in yet. I've pre-drilled the hole, but I'm waiting because I need to make up a connector piece to go from this screw up to this screw to join these pieces together. So I'm going to make up this little piece right now. Okay, I've got a terminal crimped onto this end here, and I need this connection overall from tip to tip to be about four inches. And I'm not worried about how tight these connections are. So if I make this a little loose, that's fine. It's just the wrapping around the pipe that I want to be tight. So if I cut this a little bit long, it won't hurt anything. I'm just gonna twist this together a little bit. It only makes it easier to uh, connect into the little crimp connector. I'll slip that in until it just just peeks out of the hole in the connector and then we'll use our little crimping tool here and just squeeze down on it and we've got a nice tight connection. Alright now I'm using number six by 5 8 inch long sheet metal screws. Just by experimentation, I found that these screws are just the right length to go through one of the PVC connectors through the pipe underneath and stick out inside the pipe just about a 64th of an inch, which is just about right. Instead of using a power driver, I'm screwing these in by hand because uh, if uh, I got crazy and stripped out one of these holes, then I'd have to patch the hole and seal it up and do all that stuff. It's just easier to control by hand. I'm using a metal bit to uh, drill the pilot holes. And the only reason that I'm doing that is because on occasion I'm also going through these aluminum blast gates and by using a metal drilling bit, I don't have to keep changing bits. Okay, and we've got a nice tight connection there and just enough to reach up to this next connection. But I don't want to screw that in yet because I need to put a terminal on the end of the wire that's going to now run to the next connection. Okay, you may notice a small change in the lighting. It's because I turned off this fluorescent light back here. Um, it was flaring out the lens on the camera. So 
This is my last connection. This is the little connector that went from the uh, the elbow here up to where the straight pipe starts. And this is the beginning of my wrap. And what I've done is I've wrapped the wire down the length of this pipe and we're going to go down to the next junction and screw it in just like we did here. Okay, now once I've got the wire spaced out where it's looking pretty good and it's pretty tight, I'm just going to drop a couple of pieces of tape onto this wire just to kind of hold it taut and hold it in place. <clears throat> and I can come back and remove that later. All right, now we're ready to connect up our next uh, fitting. Now that I've got my wire coiled around the pipe and spaced out and pretty tight, taped in place in a couple of places just to keep it from coming loose, I'm going to connect it to where the pipe and the fitting join right about here. I'm then going to run a connection to the screw that holds this fitting in and down to my blast gate. And we'll just keep going that way until we get one complete circuit. Well, I'm making some progress. Um, most of the ground wire system is in. This is the run that's headed over to the miter saw. And I put in an additional drop here for future. And I'm just uh, putting in the uh, blast gate now. I found that uh, taking a rubber mallet and just tapping these fittings in will get them in to where they seat fully. Okay. Let me just do a quick measurement down to here. And cut that wire. Okay. And then all we need is a short jumper piece to go from the connection right here down to this screw which ties into the aluminum blast gate. And then we'll be grounded from this aluminum blast gate all the way back to the heart of the system. Okay, and now what we're ready to do is we're ready to go from here up to here and then wrap this pipe down the length. Okay, after the last connection was made here at this last uh, pipe fitting, now I'm wrapping the wire down the length of this pipe. And uh, what I did was I just cut a really long piece off the spool. I want to make sure we don't have any splices in the middle of the wire as we're going around. So I want to make sure I had enough. And I'm just dropping it through and looping it around. And uh, then, before I get too many winds on it, I just try to get the spacing so that it looks similar to the other pipe. Not that it's really necessary, but aesthetics are important. And I get that, uh, once I get it kind of situated like I want, I'll throw a piece or two of uh, blue painter's tape on there, just hold the wire, and I'll keep working my way down until I get to the next fitting. This is the uh, last drop. This is the drop intended for my uh, miter saw station. And I've stubbed out a pipe here on the end just for future in case it's ever needed. I've got the uh, last pipe here wrapped. I've got this connection made. And I've got a wire set up to come down here with a little jumper to go down to the aluminum blast gate and that should wrap up all of the static dissipating wiring for the installation. When I get done here we'll go upstairs and see how I uh, ran it and tied it in to the main dust collection system. Okay, so just like the pipes downstairs, the uh, wire was wrapped tightly around the main manifold 
connected at the couplings where the couplings are screwed together, jumpered from here to here, and from here wrapped up the last main pipe going into the dust collector. Now let me show you how it connects into the, the uh, JDS dust collection system. Okay, the stranded bare copper grounding wire was run along the outside of the frame of the JDS dust collector and it was secured with these uh, self-adhesive stick-on things here that are actually intended to be used with wire ties, but I stuck them on and just ran the wire through it to hold it into place, ran it through the notches where the wire tie normally goes. After it came across the unit, I then ran the line over to the grounding screw, which is supplied by JDS in the unit, and grounds it to the metal frame of the dust collector. Now, when the system is properly wired up, the electrical ground will be the ground for the unit, so any static electric charge that builds up in this, in theory, will dissipate to the, the ground in the um, power line. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to check continuity. Now that all the connections are made, we need to make sure that we have a continuous unbroken circuit between the ground screw and each of the drops and to the farthest reach of the dust collection piping network and the static discharge wire. So let's go see how we're going to check continuity on this circuit. To check the continuity of our static wiring, we just need something that will show that we've got a solid electrical connection from one end to the other. Now, I thought about using just an old flashlight, a couple of batteries and some wire, and it would do just fine. But I didn't have an old flashlight that I could really dedicate to the cause. And I was at Radio Shack and I found everything I needed for just a few bucks. This is a battery holder. This will be actually really convenient. It holds four D-cell batteries at a volt and a half a piece. That means that this will put out six volts of power. Now, I could have gotten a flashlight bulb, but I found a little buzzer that's also six volts. Supposedly puts out 75 dB of sound. We'll, we'll see. But it'll be easier to hear a buzzer than see a bulb. So, I'm going to use that. I grabbed some alligator clips, not really necessary, but they're only a couple of bucks and it'll make it more convenient. And then I got a roll 90 feet of insulated wire. Now you want to use insulated wire for your continuity tester so that uh, if the wire comes into contact with something metal, you don't get any uh, spurious readings for your continuity check. So let's put these things together and let's see how well we did in setting up the static electricity draining network. Make sure we have continuity all the way. Okay, this uh, little work table, this little temporary work table is kind of in the center of the shop. So it's a good place maybe to set my continuity tester. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece of this wire long enough to reach anywhere in the shop downstairs. Yeah. All right, now with my buzzer temporarily connected here, we can see if we get a buzz. Doesn't sound like 75 dB, but I'll be able to hear it all over the shop. So let's finish up these connections. Okay. Now, in theory, I'm going to connect this to the ground screw on the dust collector. Then I'm going to take this other end and I'm going to go around to various points in the shop and make sure we get a buzz. And if the circuit is complete in between, it should be the same as touching these together. And we should get a buzz. So I'm going to go upstairs and connect this up and we'll start testing the circuit. Okay, now we've got one end of our 
homemade continuity tester connected to the ground screw and the dust collector upstairs. This is the farthest gate away from the uh, dust collector. This is over by the miter saw station. Oh yeah, we've got continuity there. Yep. So in each of these connections, all the way back to home, we've got a good connection. Now let's check the drops in the middle of the shop. Okay, now this is the drop that's uh, out in the middle of my shop for use with machines that vent out the top, like uh, a drum sander or something like that. And we've got good continuity here. Looking good here too. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing this video on how I hooked up the static dissipation wiring for my dust collection system. Next video, we're going to wrap up this series and we're going to actually fire the unit up. We're going to take some airflow readings with a digital anemometer. We're going to take some dB readings to measure the sound level both by the machine and downstairs. I'm going to take vibration readings of the machine and of the structure itself to see how much vibration is being transmitted through the system. And then, you know it's going to happen, we're going to suck up some sawdust too. We'll do a little mini review wrap up of the JDS system. So I hope you'll come back and see the next installment, the final installment of the Dust Collection series, and then we'll move on to our next project. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.